Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover video of the Bessica 495. So if we walk around the outside of the vehicle first, starting on the driver's side of the van, the first point you get to is your fresh water intake. So carry yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe connections as on a site you'll mainly just find a brass tap. So you'll have to connect to their site tap Put the other end of the hose into the van by just removing this cap which is lockable once you've finished via one of the habitation round keys. Fill it until it overflows or you can look on board the control panel and see how much water is on board the vehicle at any one time. To hook the vehicle up if you were on a site or if you were charging your leisure battery uh, before you left home. If you are planning on going wild camping or you just wanted to charge it up during the winter at home this is this would be where you'd hook your mains 230 connection so lift the flap lift the collar on the van hook the vehicle up first then the site or the outside point at home just so that you're never walking around with a live lead next we do have your cassette toilet so this is your cassette locker again opening the locker door with the habitation key Push both catches in and drop the door and then you'd lift the orange handle up and slide the cassette out of the vehicle. You can either carry it or you can wheel it to your waste disposal point which you can normally find beside the toilet block and shower block on site. And then to empty all you need to do is remove the cap, start to pour the contents out, press the button in pulls it all out, just allows a bit of air and stops the glugging and then put some water in, so there's normally a tap there, put some water in, give it a rinse out, tip out again and then this is a measuring stick, 120ml a chemical into there, can either be green or blue and it's ready to go back into the cassette. Coming to the back point of the vehicle, this is your Truma vent cover, so when operating the water heater on gas this cover must come off because it's blocking the flue and it won't work with this cover on so hand on the top thumb in the middle peel it off best place to put this is in the driver's door pocket and then when the driver gets in to drive the vehicle they can just pop it back on so pop it back on before you leave your site just so it stops all the road, road dirt getting in here but make sure it comes off when operating on gas if you're operating on electric it can stay on but we're going to operate on both sources to show you it working, so we'll leave this off. Coming around to the back of the vehicle, high level brake light, bike rack, so this takes three bikes, it's a Fiamma bike rack. And you push this in. pull this down, you put your bikes on the rails and adjust depending on the length of the bikes, these through the spokes of the wheels, ties the wheels to the rails, third, third, second and first bike crossbars go in there but you'll need to put them the opposite ways to get the handlebars on, so one with the handlebars this way, one that way, one this way so they all fit and then put some sort of bike lock around the bikes just to stop them from being stolen if the vehicle was left unattended. This vehicle has also got what's called rear corner studies, similar to a caravan, you get a winding handle. Pop that on there. And you can wind them down and it just gives the back end a little bit more stability as there's an overhang on this vehicle of about a meter, a meter and a half, so it just means that if it's going to be windy, you might not use these all the time, it's just for stability, you can put them down just so it holds the weight better at the back of the vehicle. But it's entirely up to you if you use them or not. They're mainly for caravans, because obviously caravans are a lot lighter, they don't have a heavy chassis like a motorhome does. But, like I say, you might want to use them when it's windy, just to give the vehicle that little bit more stability and that's on both sides at the rear. Coming round to the passenger side. So this is your dirty water outlet. 
So this is any water collected by the sink, the shower, the hand basin. On the way out of the site, you want to drive over the grid or as close to the gully or hedge as possible and crack this tap open. Allow the water out because you don't want to drive around with the added weight of dirty water because it's just going to use more fuel and impact your payload. So allow that out. In here you've got some storage, which is underneath one of your bench seats. External TV point on the vehicle, so it has a 12 volt, but it's a European 12 volt. So you'll have to get an adapter because it's a lot smaller. Uh, the European 12 volt to ours is quite is a bigger plug. So you'll have to buy an adapter if you want to use that. But you've got an inlet point, which is an F type connection and a mains 230 volt socket. Only works when the vehicle's hooked up. This is LPG, so this is your gas locker. So we've got our test bottle on at the moment. So the vehicle runs off propane, not butane. You would have to change the pigtail, which is the pipe from the regulator to the bottle if you wanted to run butane, but butane will freeze in the winter. Um, it's mainly known as summer gas. Propane, you can use all year round. So just go and get yourself two six kilogram color propane bottles put them on when you put the bottle in there's two spaces there's a space at further back for a reserve as well pop it on collar around the top of the bottle tie the bottle in so it's nice safe and secure and then to connect the pigtail it's a thumb wheel this one so it's left to tighten right to loosen and all you've got to do is tighten it with your thumb and your finger you don't need a spanner Make sure the bottle's turned off before you travel. You can turn it on when you arrive on your site. When you arrive on your site and you've turned the bottle on, press the green button in for three seconds to allow the gas to come through the vehicle. Otherwise, you may not have reset the crash valve, which is called on this one a secchi motion valve, and it'll stop the gas from coming from the bottle into the van. If you needed, once one bottle goes dead, you can just put it on your reserve should you be carrying two and swap them over and then exchange on your site or when you get home, your empty bottle for a full. You've got your own and light, two fridge vents, two TS step, which step control is here. And you've got a fly screen on your hard door and a blackout blind on the window. Fill in the vehicle with fuel, which is diesel. You need your main Fiat Ducato key. You can pop it in there, unlock it, and then fill it with fuel. Tire pressures can be found on the slam panel of the passenger door, so five and a half bar, which is 79.5 PSI. Tool kit underneath the passenger seat. So that's got a jack, a brace, a tow eye. This would just pull off, and then there's a turnbuckle to pull the toolkit out and you can bring it outside should you need. Underneath the floor you do have a engine battery so it's not underneath the bonnet, it's underneath the floor. So if you ever need to replace that or put a charger on or if you wanted to jump, you can jump from under the bonnet but you can also jump from the battery itself as well. But your bonnet release is on the side of the passenger dashboard. And then under here, you've got all your fluids. So you've got your coolant, your power steering, your screen wash and your brake fluid, your oil filler and your oil dipstick for checking your levels of your oil. And then if you are needing to jump start, so if the vehicle's got a flat battery or you want to jump something else off the vehicle, earthen points here, so just give it a good scrub on there um, to get a good earth. And then this is your positive point for giving or receiving a jump start, which can be found underneath the cover. So to operate your control panel, so to turn the vehicle on and off of 12 volt, you've got your master switch, which is here. If you are hooked up, you'll get mains to 30 volt. If you aren't, just 12 volt off the capacity of your leisure battery. Pressing the middle button, you can scroll through the menu. So you can see the time, the internal temperature, and the date, press once so you can see your water levels. So you can see that you've got so much in your fresh, so much in your waste. Your battery capacity of your leisure battery and your vehicle battery. 
but the leisure battery is getting charged so take the hook about to get a true reflection of the leisure battery you know see what amps are currently coming into the van so we've got 2.35 amps of mains hook up on our site here coming in charging your leisure battery if you wanted to charge the vehicle battery when storing the vehicle on the drive and you are doing like a week on the leisure a week on the vehicle which is fine over the winter you've got this button here which you can press but to press it you've got to press the tick first then you can press and hold it and it's now charging your vehicle battery so that'll just keep your engine battery topped up when the vehicle is not in use but when using it, you always want the leisure battery to be the battery that's used. Coming down this side, you've got your pump. So making sure that you've got enough water, which we do, you can turn your pump on and it'll pressurize it to the taps, toilet and shower. You've got your awning light on the outside of the motorhome. You've got the interior lights on the inside, which are all then individually switched. This is your master switch. And then this will turn off your some of your lights in the front over the kitchen area so to operate your fedford fridge so to turn the fridge on and off you just press here turn it completely off and turn it on to change your temperature you press this button here so one being the warmest five being the coldest so when pre-chilling it or when you've just first put it on have it on all five once it's got down to temperature, you may just want to turn it down slightly so that it doesn't freeze the shopping in the fridge. And then this side, you've got your energy source. So at the moment, you've got a picture of a mains plug and it says auto above it. So auto is an automatic function which always prioritizes mains 230 volt hookup. If I was to unhook the vehicle now, it would switch over to gas and self-ignite on its own because the gas bottle's on. If I was to start the engine, it would sw switch over to 12 volt off the engine alternator and it would just keep it at the same temperature as that when leaving your site or ha home if you have pre-chilled. So it just acts like a giant cool box really, the 12 volt. It won't cool it anymore, but it'll just keep it at that steady temperature when you're driving. However, if you want to manually change the source, you just press here and you've got battery, code 10, and it's flashing because it's failed because the engine's not on, loss of 12 volt, or gas, and it'll tick in the background, and then it'll light. But on auto, it waits 20 minutes before lighting on gas, and that's just in case you forgot to isolate your gas bottle and you pulled in for diesel, the last thing you want is it for it to be sparking where there's naked fumes of petrol. So in this case, you would just have to manually change it over. However, I would just leave it on the automatic function because it'll do it all for you unless you're having to manually change over the gas if you're wild camping. When not using, if you turn it off, lift the little clip up here and there's a little black toggle. That toggle then goes into here and it allows the door to stay on vent so that the air is not trapped and it can ventilate in and out of the fridge to avoid smells from forming by trapping the air inside the fridge. So in the kitchen you do have one electric hot plate which is at the back here which will work when on mains electric so do just be careful that you haven't knocked that and hooked the vehicle up make sure it's off then otherwise you do have your gas so three gas rings there make sure everything's cold before you put the glass lid down or the lid may shatter when uh, when it's too hot. So just do just be careful that that's not pulled down. You've got your grill, which is lit there. And then underneath your grill,
you do have your oven. There you are, so there's your oven away. And that is your oven. To operate your hot water on gas is the top switch. So your cover needs to come off the outside of the van like I explained when we did the walk around on the outside of the vehicle. So you can choose the temperature, so you've got 30 or 70 degrees, so how hot you want the water. And this is 10 litre capacity at any one time and it will self fill itself. So once it uses 10 litres, it will pop another 10 litres in the boiler and warm it up. But if you want it on gas, you just turn down to the gas flame and it will go green. If it goes red, either the cover's been left on or you've run out of gas or your gas bottle is not turned on. Underneath you've got ultra heat, so it does what it says, it heats the vehicle on mains to 30 volt. So 1 to 9 is your thermostat, 9 is equivalent to 30 degrees room temperature, so you can adjust the temperature to suit. Off on the O, 2000 is 2 kilowatts, 500 which is half a kilowatt, or 1000 which is 1 kilowatt. So normally on most sites throughout the UK you would just turn up to 2, which is 2 kilowatts. On more smaller CL sites, you may have to use a thousand watts, one kilowatt, or if you're abroad and they're not as generous with the electricity, or you're tripping the vehicle out, you just have to turn it down, um, and you may have to use the 500 watts. But that's how you heat the vehicle on electric and heat the water on gas. Heating the water on electric, you can find a switch at the back lounge, so it's just as simple as turning it on to 230 or off. So if you had no water on board, make sure it's off, otherwise you would burn the element out. It would be exactly like boiling a kettle with no water in, you're going to cause some damage. So make sure it's off. But if you've got water on and you're on a site, why waste your gas? Use the electricity to continue and to provide the hot water. So underneath your dinette seat, directly behind the driver's seat of the cab, you've got your 12 volt fuses. So they're all listed here, what fuse does what. So do carry some spare blade fuses with you, just in case the fuse does blow, you can replenish the fuse. And then here you do have all your trips on mains electric. So if you trip the vehicle out, try here before you try your main site. Or if you think you're not receiving power, the best way to check is tripping the van. If the van trips, you've got power. If it doesn't trip, unfortunately you're not receiving power, but it might not be... The, it'll not be the motorhome, it'll be where you're getting the electric from. These need to be on for your space heater, which is your heating of the vehicle on electric. So just make sure that's on and then you can use the dials at the back. Water heater, that needs to be on and use the switch at the back. If they're not on, you won't get a fuse, a 230 volt fuse from there to the switch. So that's like your fuse spur. And you've got your battery charger. Here you do have your battery charger at the back. So this is your leisure battery charger. It's got a fan in it. The fan will kick in when you're using too much at one time, so it'll just trying to cool it down. So if you want to leave it on um, and go to bed on a night, obviously you'll not have all the lights on. So you might hear all the like you might hear the fan whirring through the day when you've got all the lights on inside the vehicle. Once you eliminate a few lights, it should go silent. So to drain off your fresh water when you're ready to put the vehicle to bed in the winter and you're winterising or if you're taking on a source of contaminated water, the hatch in the, on the kitchen floor is screwed down so get yourself a screwdriver or a, or a drill and just lift the four screws up which will allow you to lift the panel off, remove the cap. And as you can see in there there's a plug so you just put your hand in. Grab a hold of the plug and it will drain directly out underneath the van. So lift the plug out and it will drain directly out underneath the vehicle. So you want to do that in the winter to avoid the water from freezing in this tank or if you've taken on a source of contaminated water. So if you were wild camping and you're relying on gas to heat the vehicle and the water, so I've showed you how to heat the water on gas. To heat the vehicle on gas, you'd use your fire. So this is your ultra heat fire. So what you need to do is push down and turn along with lighting. Yep, 
you hear the roar there, I can see the flame, so if you just look there, you can see the flame on the fire, so that's how you'd heat the vehicle if you're wild camping and weren't hooked up, you'd have to use gas, so you've got 1 to 10 being the temperature and a piezo spark ignition on the top of the fire. You can also circulate it if you want via a 12 volt fan, but some people don't because when they're wild camping they want to get the best out of the leisure battery and it, a fully charged leisure battery should last you two and a half to three days if you use it correctly. So it would just convect out the front and then you just have to let the air circulate around the van and heat the van itself or you can use it on A which is automatic. You've got one to five being the fan speed and what that will do is once it automatically detects with a thermostat in the vehicle that it's warm it will cut out and then once it drops it will cut back in or you can have it on manual which is to the left hand side and it will just continue to heat the vehicle until you come and turn it down turn it off and it will just provide the heat until you intervene so in the washroom to operate your toilet ensure that the pumps turned on <laughs> press the button and you'll get a fresh water flush Put a small amount of water in the toilet before you use it and then you want to open the blade which is on the pedestal. Open it up, use the loo, flush it and then close the blade back once you've flushed the toilet. That'll mean that you can get the cassette out the side of the van. If that was to be left open the cassette won't come out because the mechanism on the top of the cassette is still engaged with the bottom of the toilet. It'll indicate on here when you are required to empty the toilet so it'll give you a couple of green lights just to say that it is now full on the top corner there if you've got any pink put it in a small spray bottle small amount of pink bit of water spray the bowl does the same job just it doesn't have a separate header tank like caravans this is a main fresh water flush for the toilet washroom lights here toilet cabinet toilet roll holder towel holder This comes out when you're having a shower just to stop the toilet from getting wet and your sink tap is also in the shower head so that would go up there but make sure in the winter that you just unscrew it just so no water sits in here and potentially freezes when you're winterizing. But you can see there that the pump's working. And then it's kicked in and you've got hot water coming off that tap there so your hot water system is working. In the back corner of the vehicle so you've got the flue on the outside of the van this is your boiler so your boiler holds 10 litres of water like I've said to drain this boiler down in the winter so starting off with the waste outside the fresh through the tank leaving all the taps open disconnecting the shower head from the shower hose and lying that down in the shower tray just so no water sits in there Last thing you want to do is come in right where the boiler is, yellow tap, lift it up and drain all the water directly out underneath the van. You would leave this stood up in the time that you're not using the van and when you come to reuse it just flick it back down, that shuts the boiler off and then when you fill it with water and pull it through the cold water and hot water ta taps it will fill the boiler up. You'll get a lot of spluttering the first time you open the hot side of the tap for a few good three to five minutes until you get a pressurized flow off one tap do them all and your system's prime but please drain them down in the winter because otherwise you're avoiding your own warranty by leaving water in the vehicle because it's your responsibility to keep the vehicle safe from frost so to make your large bed at the back disconnect your catch there slide this out all the way to it till it hits the two stoppers and what you want to do is you want to lift it up and slide it over just so that you've now locked it in the slats can't move back or forward they're locked into place and then all you need to do is put your infill cushions which are your backrests into here pull the cushion forward slightly and there you have one large double bed. You've got a large overcab bed which ladder clips on the front here to gain access and curtains to give a bit of privacy to whoever's sleeping up there as well as a child net to stop them rolling out. 
However, when traveling, you can use this as storage if you put light things up there, like towels, bedding, extra clothing, nothing heavy, and you can push this up just so that you can walk through into the cab without banging your head.